Hello friends, welcome back to the James Lawrence Allcott channel. It's a precarious time. I went to the gym this morning, I'm a bit tired, and I haven't had a coffee yet. Anything could happen. Oh, and Ronaldo's done an interview for Sky Sports, 20-minute interview where he's basically said that the, the mentality is a mess at Manchester United. We're going to be diving into that. We're going to be having a look at the key quotes. That's right, the key quotes. I'm going delirious because I'm tired, so bear with me. And then we're going to have a look at some of your cheeky tweets. Cheeky tweets, cheeky tweets. What is going on? Right, let's do this video. Ronaldo. Talking about mentality, let's dive into some of the key quotes. We can discuss if he's being muggy or not, and then we can just pick it apart because I think it's interesting. The first question I've got, why? Why has he been put forward now? Now, I don't think there's anything really kind of untoward with this. I was just chatting to Hugh Woosencroft, who I do ESPN with, and I was saying, like, how does this work? Like, obviously, every single game man united are essentially on television and then there are interviews that are allowed to be had and of course when you ask for a player you're going to just keep asking for ronaldo that often doesn't happen i guess what's different here is that on this occasion there's maybe a few things to sort of calm down in terms of the fact that ronaldo didn't play in the game against wolves why was that the case is everything fine there kind of put out that fire but again there's also opportunities to stoke some new ones for the Red Devils. That's right. So Ronaldo kind of gets put forward. Then the question goes, Ronaldo, do you fancy doing it? And he seemed like he was quite happy to talk about it. And I wonder if he was looking to get in front of what's been going on recently. If you think of some of the rumours or comments more likely that Gary Neville's been talking about, whinge bags, things like that. There's And the idea that there's sort of rift things being leaked in the press. I saw Stephen Housen saying that he thinks it's Dave, uh, Dean Henderson or he's been told that. He's been told that. Um, so there's been leaks within it. Um, confusion with the coaching as well. They don't like it. All these things, right? So how do you, again, how do you draw a line and move it forward? PR is a big part of this. So to put forward Ronaldo for one of these interviews, you know it's going to be explosive. So let's have a look at some of the things that he said. One thing I would say is that, yeah, he was careful. He was careful, but there were some sort of basic home truths that came through here. Some of these quotes led to more questions. And we've got, of course, got your questions as well, which we'll dive into in just a second. So on United's aims, United should win the league or be second or third. I don't see any other position for Manchester United in my heart. I don't accept that our mentality be less than being in the top three teams in the Premier League, in my opinion. I think to build up good things, sometimes you have to destroy a few things. Now, this... This I like. This was a bit juicy from our boy Cristiano. Because I guess ultimately he's saying, and I've said this numerous times, that you've got to, you know, you've got to break a few eggs here to to make a make a Man United trophy winning omelet. And I think for him to say it himself, he's essentially saying that there are members within this squad that will not survive. And I think that's okay to be said. And actually, kind of reframes the narrative to something where it's like why aren't this why isn't this group doing better to this sort of state of flux that man united are massively in right now with the manager um who he said he didn't even call him by name he said the new coach um but there's a lot of things kind of are, are in interim status and so when you're in interim status this idea that you're going to be in the top three or there's going to be these changes these are things that we all said Every single one of us. And I don't want to hear otherwise because a lot of people going, oh, this this can't work. That can't work. We all said it was going to work. We all said Ralph Ragnett was coming in and life was going to be glorious once more. And it's not been. But sentences like that, sometimes you have to destroy a few things. I think it shows a few things. It shows how Ronaldo is ruthless, shows how he's a winner. And yeah, it just highlights kind of his psyche within this that what is going on right now, he's not, you know, devoid of awareness like he understands that this isn't good enough they haven't been good enough for the five, last five or six matches and things need to change and if things need to change then there are going to be casualties so it's interesting so he's saying look new year new life start again Ralph Ragnick it did seem quite 
minimal what he was saying about Ralph Rangnick. And so since he arrived five weeks ago, he changed many things, but he needs time to put his ideas across to the players. It takes time, but I believe that he is going to do a good job. We know we aren't playing the best football, but we have many games to improve. Since he arrived, I think in some points we are better, but he needs time. He needs time. He needs time. He needs time. It's not that easy. It's not that easy to change the mentality of the players and the way they play, the culture, the system like that. Because I think with this, like often people talk about culture and new manager, new philosophy, all this stuff. And there's this idea that, OK, the, so the old philosophy was bad and this is a new one. And, and that's interesting, I think, as well, because let's go back to the kind of the start of the season. The way we were talking about Man United was that they had a shot. They'd finished second. Things were rosy overall. Disappointing penalty shootout defeat to Villarreal, of course, in the Europa League final. But aside from that. There was progress. Yeah, Bruno Fernandes, who's been superb for the team. You've brought in Sancho, Varane, Ronaldo. It all looked exciting. Football makes hypocrites of all of us, right? So to have that kind of feeling that, you know, the culture has to change suggests to me that Ronaldo has seen something here where it wasn't right. And I guess what's very, very clear is that Ralph Ragnick is applying a very new culture. Um, I believe he's doing going to do a good job. So it doesn't mean he's doing a good job, but he's going to do a good job. Very minimal, I thought, the, the Ralph Ragnick stuff. On his teammates, uh, remember when I was 18, 19, 20, this is when it gets a little bit interesting because it, you know, we talk about that rift, the cliques. It does seem that it's some of these younger players that need to switch on in the in the eyes of someone like Cristiano Ronaldo, is there some hypocrisy in that? We'll dive into that and in some of the uh, questions that you guys have got. But yeah, I think it's fair enough to say that. Look, it's not been enough. Like, are you getting the the true, you know, optimum of these players right now? They're not. So he had it when he was younger. Cristiano, you have to improve, but other people don't accept that. If you criticise, sometimes when you when you're a little bit harder, they do the opposite. So it does feel like there have been arguments. There has been conflict. It's interesting. But I think this is the thing that he was quite passionate about. It comes from inside of you. This is something he spoke about when there was this, the initial idea of the mutiny from the, the players here is that ultimately it does come down to players. And what I think was interesting with Ronaldo is that he was saying it's okay to be an individual. But you kind of have to, it's the sum of the parts. If, if everyone's being an individual and doing their job, the team will, will do brilliantly. Um, and he wants to win. There's no doubt about that. Um, he said that he wasn't the right person to talk about United's form and to, for him to make those ideas of what should change. But let's be honest, last five, six games, do you think United play very well? No, you know that. Everyone knows that. This was interesting as well. He said he don't think it's ethical on his part to say that, that, of some of the changes that have happened or some of the poor elements of the running of the club. But ultimately, he doesn't want to be in sixth place, seventh place. Finally, mentality was discussed for about 15 minutes of this uh, interview, really. And I thought that was really, really interesting because, you know, in terms of talent and personnel there, I think there are obviously some gaps, but you've got to kind of make it work. You've got to find a way. And I think that's what Ronaldo is saying, which I think is a massively positive um, part of the interview here. For me, the most important thing is the mentality for you to be professional, help the team, the right mentality, self-thought. I don't think he said self-thought. I think he said self-talk positive. So do positive self-talk. I think all the uh, detail depends on you, not the coaches, the fans, the press. It depends on you. If you're proud of yourself and have some dignity, I think you have to do much more. And it starts with me. That is, that's the quote of a leader right there. And so I think this is just what Man United fans needed. I think it's what Man United, the football club needed, because in terms of who's dispensable, I think Ronaldo, with what he brings in terms of his leadership, the standards that he sets for the team, and, you know, his goal-scoring feats in previous seasons and this season and the money he's earning as well. Um, he's he's not dispensable right now, you know. So I think it's interesting that they've... It feels like this is the setup for a few future moves that could could arrive in the next um, next couple of weeks here because there are... What this does, when you see that kind of leadership and that ferocity, that's probably the wrong word, from someone like Ronaldo... You then think, well, let's make him the leader. Let's make him the captain. So the question here is, let me know in the comments below, should he be the captain? 
And that's one of the, the questions that you guys have put forward. I asked on Twitter, what you got for me? And this is what you bloody said. I think I've hearted the uh, or liked the uh, the ones that I think work. So, Tom, at Saucy Q. Nice. Uh, I love Ronaldo, but he was talking about a lot about the younger players needing to listen more to the more experienced ones. Uh, at the field, I very rarely see Ronaldo push them on. More often, he whines at them when they do something wrong. What do you think about this? I think that's valid. I think the way that he has behaved at times, and I think he's probably trying his best, but the sort of the whining, and I think one of the big ones is the sort of running straight down the tunnel, Maybe that's due to that, you know, the chaos that ensues when he's on a football pitch because he's such a superstar. But he could have done more. I think let's put it that way. In terms of his body language, I think he could have done a little bit more. But it's difficult out there. It is difficult out there. And he is frustrated, clearly. Sorry, I'm on the wrong one. So I think, look, the fact that he's sort of whining at times, this kind of leads into uh, another question, which I, I want to scroll down to because I, I think it's really interesting. Is about the captaincy so Anish Sengupta thank you mate do you think it's time he should be made captain if yes what does Maguire what does Maguire's position in the club stand so this is the thing you know to change the captaincy halfway through a season at a club like Man United is is big news and it's tough news for someone like Harry Maguire to, to, to deal with would it relieve some pressure to him would it do damage i don't know i think he would be gutted but i think in time that sort of focus on him as the captain and also him as the guy who's got to come out and talk is hurting him a little bit and i think if he can get back to just concentrating uh you know on, on some better performances because he has been poor this season then actually it could be for for the better and with the, an interview like this, this is what i mean in terms of those next steps it puts the ball in ralph ragnick's court of saying okay you be the leader. And what I quite like about that when we're kind of mixing up those two questions is that body language that you or that leadership that you want to see on the pitch. If you make him the captain, you make him the figurehead, which he is pretty much anyway. Do you then kind of keep him honest? Keep him honest to the ideals of what Ralph Ragnick wants to put forward. I think we've seen it with his desire to sprint more and put more effort in. I think he's I think he's really worked hard. And that was something I said a while ago. So he's he's going to have to bend here. And he has, and that credit to him in terms of his professionalism. And, you know, what a player to have when he's got, he's that he's done that much in the game and he's willing to, to bend a little bit. To add that to the fact that you need to set some standards here in terms of your professional professionalism and ultimately the fact that you don't need to get on. You need to start winning. It's simple as that. And I think Ronaldo personifies that massively. Be an individual, but get the job done. That's, I mean, that's easier said than done. But I think what that comes down to is doing what you need to for the team. And Ralph Ragnick is going to be here for a long time. A lot of these players uh, are are dispensable and they will be gone sooner rather than later. And I think that's really pulling into focus now. So for Ronaldo to be that leader, I think it could raise the standards of the, the rest of the team. So I look at some of these other questions that you guys put forward. Tim. Why do some managers like Conte demand loyalty and will make his players work hard, but others like Ragnik and my guy Kovac at Monaco are criticised for being too militant despite asking for fundamentally the same thing? Why do some managers just get a pass and others don't? I think it is about charisma at times. I think that does play a part. I think your um, your career as a player, I think also... Uh, uh, plays a part in that because it, it makes it I don't know, allowed, I guess. Uh, I think you're right, though. Ultimately... Ralph Ragnick should be able to look to instill that kind of energy from these players. And if they haven't got the stomach for the fight, then they have to be moved on. And the same goes for Spurs. I think there's players that aren't capable of it. I think the chasm between Conte as a manager and this Spurs squad is maybe uh, a bit different in terms of the sort of power and the hierarchy in comparison to Ralph Ragnick, who's a smaller name, let's say, and then you've got bigger names within that squad, I would say. So maybe that's kind of part of it. I think people like to um, romanticise as well sometimes about Conte and what he offers. I think he's got a lot of really good soft skills as well, actually, and his man management excites the players. Maybe Ralph Ragnick doesn't have those assets, and that might be why it might be hurting him a little bit. Free Fernandez. 
Please, James, I just don't get it. All his talk of standards, but where are his standards on the pitch? Yep, I think that kind of goes back to the previous one. It's not like he's playing great. And I think, well, okay. And people can't call him out because he's CR7. He craves a top three finish. We were second before him. <sighs> Spicy. Spicy stuff. Um, I think it's, look, he has played brilliantly, let's be honest. And his job is getting chances and taking them and being being clutch. So with that in mind, I think he has done his job. You know, can he work harder for the team? I th- actually think he has worked harder recently as well. So I he had certain critiques for him and I think it was hurting the team overall. I still think that's to be seen if, you know, that juggernaut like him is kind of allowing the rest of the team to sort of social loaf somewhat, possibly. But I guess maybe you might as well double down on it now and kind of go, look, yes, you've got our, we've got our leader here in terms of Ralph Ragnit, but Ronaldo is that almost second in command manager and he would want the best. And once he gets that captain's armband, I think he would demand it and he get then gets given that kind of credibility, as it were, of not just being the star striker, but being the captain of the side. And then he has to be careful with his man management as well as a captain. You've got to get people on side. So... I think it's interesting. It looks like he maybe wants that gig. You know, is he capable of doing a gig? Maybe. But I think it could be one where it's that kind of Michael Jordan style where it's like, look, these are the standards. Come join me. If you want to be the best, you're going to have to be that way. And he has to then work on his leadership, which I think, you know, going from that interview again, I think he's very fair in everything that he's saying. Casey Evans, do you think Ronaldo really looked at this United team and thought, yeah, there there are win trophies? Or do you think he believed his influence was enough to override probably what was a year or two more of building at a non-elite coach? Great comment from Casey here. And I want to finish with this one because let's remember, I think we've always got to remember what we said at the start with these things. And at the start of this season, we were saying that this Man United side were capable. Were capable of having a little go. You know, maybe it would have been going from what, however many points they were from the top of the league down to like 10 points. And maybe it would have been second place or third place. But it certainly would have not been where they are in the league right now, which is miles off. And it would have been the same kind of turbulence that you've seen this year. I think he expected so much more from this team, both in performances and results. So I think he thought he could have an influence. And I think that's a great characteristic to have, the feel that you can influence the side. But I think he did go there thinking, I can win trophies with this team, especially with me adding that little sprinkle of of clutch stardust that he always can do, you know. So fascinating, fascinating times. Um, And how it will play out, I think it plays out well for Ronaldo. What will be interesting, if the next move is to give him the captaincy and let me know what you think about that one, then, then you're back to results. It will always come back to results and performances and they need to improve. And it'll be interesting to see if that 4-2-2-2 is sort of stuck with and they just kind of take the pain of it all or if they go back to a 4-2-3-1. And if that happens, what happens with Cavani and Ronaldo? What happens with all these things? Because it is such a mess there at the moment in terms of not playing 4-2-3-1 is very tricky for them right now unless you get total buy-in from the squad. And at the moment, they don't have it so let me know what you think if you are new to the channel please do consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell as well hit the like button as well and get involved in the comments thanks for watching i'll see you soon